Hello folks, Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Why do farmers mow down their goldenrod when pollinators need that source of nectar to prepare for winter? I'm going to tell you here in just a couple seconds. But first, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Now let me explain. First let me get down off the tractor and uh, we'll take a walk back here on this goldenrod and I'll explain why farmers mow it down. Okay, so why do farmers mow their goldenrod? I can't speak for all farmers, but as a grass-fed beef farmer, I rely a lot on having some grass in the fall and winter to graze, and we try and do something called stockpiling. And that's basically where we set a couple pastures aside and uh, we let it grow during the late summer and the fall. And uh, once grass quits growing, we have a little bit of stockpile to save us from getting into the hay sooner than we need. So what you're looking at here behind me is roughly 18 acres left of this 25 acre pasture that I haven't mowed. And there's a lot of goldenrod, a lot of goldenrod. You might even see a little bit of ironweed and that's the tall purple plant. But what you're not really gonna notice as a beekeeper is what's mixed in with it. Brambles or briars as some people call them. I don't want that. Um, there's quite a bit of it mixed in here too. We've also got some multiple rose bushes, which we're trying to kill off. Um, we've got some honeysuckle, which is another great source in the spring for bees. But, you know, it doesn't do anything for the cattle. And right here is a big honeysuckle bush. So, it's not that I don't want the pollinators or the honeybees to have this source. It's that I need reserved uh, stores for the cattle for winter, just like I do my bees. So in an effort to do that, in order to get sun down where the grass is, underneath all this goldenrod, it needs to be mowed off. That way the sun can get down there and we get some grass growth. Now if we walk in here and look, and you push this goldenrod to the side, there is grass growing. But it's not getting a whole lot of sun, and when we get rain, what do you think stealing it? That's right, the goldenrod. So for that reason, that's why I mow. Get all this stuff out of here, have something better for the cows to eat. Cattle don't eat this goldenrod. Cattle won't eat these brambles. Now they will eat them when they're blooming, but they're only gonna eat the tips. So for this reason, I gotta mow it. But I, I try and do my part and leave them what I can. Now if you look over here where I've already mowed, you're going to notice some patches that are left. You see a patch there. And you're going to see a big long strip. That whole long strip, and now it's not quite bloomed yet, but there's a lot of goldenrod in that long strip. You can see a little bit of a yellow casting on that goldenrod patch right there. And that's getting ready to bloom. There's also a little patch right here I left. That's all goldenrod. There's no brambles mixed in. Nothing that I don't want to come back next year, such as the brambles. Um, so I left the goldenrod. What will happen? That area won't have a whole lot of grass for the cows. But the goldenrod will eventually die off and it won't be back in the spring like, say, the brambles or the multiple rose or the honeysuckle. I see a honeysuckle here I missed, but that is what it is right here. Now right here we have some aster. That's another good source for the bees. It's not blooming yet, but it will be once the cooler weather starts to approach. So that's why farmers mow the goldenrod. It's nothing against the pollinators. They've just gotta have some food reserves for the livestock that they're raising or managing. Nothing against the pollinators. So there you go. I hope that gives you a little bit of knowledge on why farmers mow their goldenrod. I know when I started to manage the, the cattle about seven years ago, I kind of questioned the same thing myself, but now I understand a little bit better and maybe this will enlighten you. Now in other news, I tried something new this week. I offered my bees a watermelon since we're in a little bit of a dearth. And uh, 
It didn't go quite as well as I thought. I figured there'd be a lot more bees than what there was, but there was a decent amount of bees. Check out this little clip. Today I'm gonna conduct a little experiment. We got some storms on the way, but it's nice right now. The bees are flying. Um, not a whole lot of nectar flow. Um, in the last few years, I've seen several people take a watermelon, hack it down the middle, set both halves side by side, and the bees just love it. So it's a source of food, and you know, of course, you wouldn't be able to extract it and sell it as honey, but it's a good way to get them prepared for winter. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut this watermelon up, cut it in half. I might cut me out a little piece for myself and the wife. The daughter's at school, so. And uh, throughout the day, we'll check back and see if the bees enjoy it. I sure hope they do. I've got 650 in this organic, raised by Amish, watermelon. So we'll see. Let me get cutting, and uh, we'll come back and check it out. Okay, so I've got it cut in half. I tell you, I tried a couple little pieces of it. It is extremely sweet. Don't want the wife to hear that because she's going to say I'm wasting it. Hopefully, she's not around when I'm editing this video. Man, bees better get on that. Are the beekeepers going to? Mm mm mm. Maybe I should take half of that in and wrap it up. For the family and give the bees the rest maybe that's what i'll do take one of these halves i'm gonna cut it in half take it inside wrap it up in some uh, shrink wrap tonight when my daughter gets home we'll all have a piece of watermelon and the bees can have the rest we'll check back in a little bit and see if there's any bees indulging and don't tell the chickens this is up here because they'll eat it before the bees find it this is about 20 minutes after setting the watermelons out here. Imagine traffic's about to increase a lot here in the next hour, maybe two hours. So this is five days after I cut the watermelon for the bees. Now if I take my finger just to give you an idea, you can see it's still rather juicy. And the bees are drawn to it. Look, created a little cavity for juice. And of course the bees are going to go there. Um, I've had a couple hornets, but for the most part it's been honeybees every single day. So what do you think? You ever thought about offering your bees a watermelon? Surely it's nothing you would want to do to build up their food storage for winter, but it's kind of a little treat. And if you enjoy your bees like I do, they're kind of worth it, right? So if you enjoyed this week's video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take time to do so and make sure you click on that little bell so you can get notified when I release new videos. For those of you with YouTube channels that are just getting started and would like to to get more followers and get more of a, a, a viewing, um, I would like to suggest something called TubeBuddy. And TubeBuddy is a tool that helps you gather better keywords, better titles, better thumbnails, and uh, with that, you'll get more views. Um, if you go down to my video description, um, clear down to the very bottom, and follow my affiliate link, and use JC's Bees as the affiliate code, um, you'll get a little bit of a discount and at the same time I will get a little bit of a kickback from suggesting you to TubeBuddy. Um, like I say, I've used it for about eight years now and it's helped me a lot. So if it's something you're interested in, check it out. I'd also like to throw a shout out to Sohi. Um, it was, they were just introduced to me this week. They're a Southern Ohio rock band and they got a killer song called Bucknut. Um, if you're a rocker and you live in Ohio, I suggest you get down in my video description and look for the link and check it out. Um, they show a lot of scenery, little snapshots from around Ohio. It's kind of neat. Um, 
I know I live within about 20 minutes of the giant Lawnenberger basket that they show in the video, so it was kind of neat to see that. Um, if you're a rocker, check them out. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>